Hey guys, and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at one of the upcoming B&M exclusive releases, the seventh Doctor from the TV movie, and an Axis Strike Squad Dalek from Gallifrey 6. Once again, a massive thank you to Character Options for supplying these figures ahead of release, and let's begin by taking a look at the packaging. So once again, the figures come in this beautiful window display featuring the seventh Doctor's head as it appeared in the title sequence along with art from the cover of Gallifrey 6 on the side. The front also features that lovely embossed sticker and details which story this Dalek is from, even though the Seventh Doctor doesn't appear in that story, but more on that later. The back of the box gives us a synopsis about the story, as well as more cover art from Gallifrey 6. Inside we have a rather nice backdrop of the Dalek sources attacking, which really fits in well with the Time War theme. Out of the box, well, this was a surprise, and an inventive one at that, so let's start with the Seventh Doctor. As you can see, he is clearly in his TV movie outfit, but the figure is a repaint of his usual question marked attire. And never in a million years did I think that this would work, but somehow it kind of has. They opted for the solemn hatless head, which suits this version of the Seventh Doctor right down to the ground. The paint apps here are very good, and I love the fact that they've added some grey to his hair to suggest that he's a little older than he was in 1989. The jacket has been repainted a lighter brown, as per the TV movie, along with a tie, which includes the zigzag pattern from the film, which is impressive attention to detail. Sadly, the zigzags on mine are a bit worse for wear, but it's a minor gripe, but it might be something to look out for when these start appearing in the shops. The jumper has been repainted red to match the waistcoat from the film, which works far better than I imagined it would. The shoes are now black, although I'm pretty sure in the film they're brown, and the trousers are checkered in shades of brown and blue. So here things start getting a bit strange. If you look at pictures of the Seventh Doctor's outfit from behind the scenes of the TV movie, you can see that they're very much sort of greens and orange, sort of tartany type patterns. So I'm not quite sure what happened here. I mean, for me, it's not a massive issue, but again, it's something to bear in mind. Obviously, the TV movie had neither the scarf, hanky, or chain. Both are featured here due to the sculpt reuse, and the same red as the waistcoat has been used here, along with the familiar gold on the chain. So considering this, along with the trousers, my guess is that Big Finish didn't want to rely too heavily on the TV movie look if it wasn't entirely possible to replicate it. Even the jacket is smooth, and like the tweed he wore in the film. So I think perhaps maybe they wanted to suggest that this was like a halfway point, a point where there were bits of both outfits before he settled into his last one. I'm not entirely against the idea, after all he had various costumes in the new adventures, so why not elsewhere on audio? Overall, I think it's a good look, and it works well. Articulation-wise, it's the standard joint at the head, shoulders, biceps, elbows, wrists, waist, hips, thighs, and knees. There are no accessories with these sets, so don't expect to see the Doctor's question mark umbrella. Moving on to the Dalek, well this is another interesting one, because like I said earlier, as far as I'm aware, the Seventh Doctor isn't in this story that this Dalek comes from. Now I have my money set on this guy being from Curse of the Daleks, but it would seem that the only sculpt that they had to use this year was from the new series Daleks. Now, this doesn't bother me because, as far as I'm concerned, this is another cool Dalek variant. Now, this was featured on the cover to Gallifrey 6, and it caused quite a stir at the time because it was the first time seeing a modern Dalek associated with anything from the classic series. So the Dalek is the basic bronze model with a dirty wash featuring the gold midband that was only featured in Dalek, if my Dalek prop history is correct. And instead, it has a matte black dome and matching hemispheres. I absolutely love the look of this Dalek in hand. The black really stands out against the bronze, and it makes for an interesting variant. As I've said previously, it's just a reuse of the standard bronze Dalek sculpt, which has always been incredibly detailed. And this time around, as you can see on the solar slats, they've actually painted the bolt silver, which is a nice touch. And the whole Dalek has a sort of very light, dirty wash all over it to give it a battle-ready feel, which I think works really well. Articulation-wise, this one is the same as pretty much any other Dalek toy you've ever seen, with movement at the head and the eye stalk, ball-jointed limbs, and three wheels at the base. So overall, this set is something of an oddity. It's the TV movie McCoy that's not quite from the TV movie, but 
close enough if you squint, kind of like the missing link between season 26 and the film. And then we have a Dalek, and then we have brand new Dalek, which is a welcome addition to our ever-growing Dalek armies. So thanks for watching guys, I hope this has been useful to you, and once again thanks to Character for sending this set over, and stay tuned to the channel for another B&M review coming soon.